بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله بها التوفيق to continue our study of زاد الصادق by the late Mullah Muhsin Faith Kashani we said that he has 25 instructions number 20 which we mentioned briefly last session is to have good akhlaq, good temper to treat people with courtesy and not to develop bad opinion about people Quran says فَجْتَنِبُوا كَثِيرًا مِّنَ الظَّنِّ إِنَّ بَعْضَ الظَّنِّ إِثْمٌ You must avoid most of suspicions or we can say most of uh, bad uh, opinions or developing you know, bad opinions about people because maybe sometimes you are right maybe sometimes people or some people have bad intentions bad plans etc but this is not always true and sometimes it is a sin sometimes it's big mistake to think in a negative way about other people uh, there is a hadith which says that If it is a time in which most of people are bad people, then maybe you can have, you know, su dhan. If you are dealing with, you know, dishonest people, you are surrounded by dishonest people. Or for example, you know, in the maybe political world, you know, for example, if many countries they don't have you know honest way of doing politics then maybe you need to be you know very careful by uh, thinking that they may have bad plans bad opinions about us for example but this is not to be a general policy all the times with all the people No, that is when it's a time that such things are common, are popular, are dominant. And I personally sometimes you know, put it in this way. I say that you need to be careful. You need to be exercising ihtiyat or precaution. But you don't need to be suspicious, except with those who are proved to be bad and vicious. <laughs> People who are not proved to be bad and vicious, be careful. Don't be deceived by nice words, for example, or nice appearance. Be careful. But if you are suspicious, the problem is that, first of all, maybe they are not nice people. Secondly, suspicion puts you in a mood that you try to find mistakes, find you know mischief, and therefore you may misinterpret things. So this person, for example, today tries to be very kind with you. So ah, this kindness is because he is very vicious 
he wants to deceive me. If he is not kind with you, then again you say, no, he is a very vicious person. So whatever that person does, if you have suspicion, you may misinterpret. So when it comes to mu'mineen, when it comes to people in family, in community, people who don't have history or record of mischief, we should try to be forgiving, easygoing, kind, and thinking in a nice way about them. And even if it is proved that they have done something bad, we have to be forgiving, as we said last week about Malik Ashtar, the famous story. Number 21. He says, you should make sadq, truthfulness, in words and actions your motto. Not just be truthful, not just, you know, tell the truth. Make this your motto, make this your, you know, attitude in life. People should know that this person is a person that has, has adopted Sidq as his or her general policy, general attitude. In some lectures, for example, about indicators of piety in uh, Akhlaq series of the Hose, in outcomes of Islamic education, I have explained that truthfulness is very fundamental in Islamic value system, and I think it's the most fundamental actually thing and everything goes back to seeking the truth, welcoming the truth, be being humble before the truth, the value of every action is measured by truthfulness. So it's very fundamental. Number 22. Putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all matters, all affairs. Tawakkul is a great policy, it's a great quality, it's a great way of solving, facing challenges. And it really makes big difference. It's one of those uh, spiritual aids and empowering tools. So, in a spiritual journey, certainly one way of measuring our success is to see how much we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or, in contrast, how much we put our trust in other others, in people, in means, in my own efforts or cleverness, etc. It's true that other things, other people have some role, but we cannot put our trust in anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can use Ordinary means, for example, if I am ill, I should go for treatment, I should go to see doctor, take prescription, etc. But I don't put my trust in doctor. I don't put my trust in medicine. Or for example, I want to start a business or do something, you know. I cannot rely on my experience, on my intelligence, on my efforts. I can only put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time that I use my experiences, I use my, you know, intelligence, my, you know, talents, etc. I use them. But my trust is only put on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because everything else 
is only effective if he wants number two everything is changeable everything can be overcome the one that puts everything together and make them effective and who is always reliable is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so putting our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all affairs and not looking at asbab means not relying on the causes the means and causes and when it comes to tahsil al-rizq to making our you know uh, living and acquiring what we need for sustenance and maintenance we should do it in ajmal you know this is a beautiful expression that we have in some uh, du'as what does it mean in ajmal you can say it means in a beautiful way and also in a you know brief and not intensive way so do tahsil or rizq is one of the great acts of ibadah to work in order to make your uh, living from halal it's great but do it beautifully not by overdoing not by over emphasizing not by exhausting all your time and talents and energy and leaving no time no energy for your family for community for your spirituality again you know that these things are important but the real sustainer is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore he says اجمال کردن و بسیار بجد نگرفتن در آن بسیار بجد نگرفتن means you should not take it too seriously do it take it seriously but not too seriously و فکرهای دور به جهت آن نکردن don't think too much about it don't develop you know long dreams and plans for it at the same time that it's good to make halal risk especially if your intention is to look after yourself your family community help other people give them job give them support that's great about that but the measure is when you see that it's reaching the point that your akhlaq is becoming bad you are too stressful you have no time for community for family you are compromising about uh, fiqhi rules about moral rules then this is showing that you have gone too far but if you are able to have a very good business and at the same time remain calm at the same time remain virtuous honest available for your family community that's great it's very good we need people who can make lots of wealth and support others but not sacrificing their own taqwa and as much as possible to be content qanaat and not going after unnecessary things so he puts all these things under number 22 tawakkul and then under tawakkul to adopt a balanced attitude towards work 
business making money and about consumption to be balanced not to go to excess etc 23 which is very important again all of them are important but this is very much needed is to be patient with the bad behavior of your family and those who are related to you associated بر جفای اهل و متعلقان صبر کردن Sometimes maybe parents maybe siblings maybe children maybe spouse maybe in-laws cousins uncles friends they annoy you many times maybe not knowingly sometimes maybe knowingly maybe you have an in-law who is annoying you maybe you need to be patient you should not get upset quickly and react quickly and show bad temper then he says it's very powerful very powerful and this is really what uh, maybe every mystic says هر چه جفا بیشتر می کشد و تلقی بلا بیشتر می کند زودتر به مطلب می رسد The more you are hurt and suffer The more you receive problems and remain patient the faster you reach your destination we think I'm saying about myself we think everything should be perfect everything should be ideal so that we can focus on our spirituality on our ibadah do that stuff you know, zek, do lots of ibadah uh, but when people hurt me, annoy me don't appreciate me you know, I cannot, you know, focus on my spirituality, etc but the fact is that actually when people annoy you and you are patient this is the great source of your success you can succeed here more than when you have no problems and just do ibadah. Ibadah is very important. Tafakkur is very important and we should do that. But being patient with what people do with you. Especially why he says Ahl wa muta'liqan Your family, your associates. Because these are the people that you have to live with them, you know, you cannot disconnect, you cannot distance from them, you have to live with them. Yes, maybe sometime you can travel, but not you can disconnect completely. So be patient. Uh, as I think I said before, uh, the one of uh, you know spiritual people in Tehran used to say, "Maranjo, Maranjan," not to hurt anyone, don't hurt anyone, and don't be hurt. And this "don't be hurt" is maybe more difficult, so we have to be very careful.
if you are able to be patient with people who are and either annoying or not appreciating or not respectful if you are able to be patient this enlarges or enlarges your heart your increases your capacity how much Rasulullah was patient he was a living in family in the community with people that had bad akhlaq and sometimes they had you know dishonest character there were munafiqeen in the city Rasulullah knew them there were people in family that Rasulullah knew them knew what they were thinking they knew what they were planning knew what they were go going to do in future but he was patient and most of the time you see that if you have this attitude those people will appreciate because not that all people are really vicious many people are not vicious maybe they are careless maybe they are short-sighted maybe they are biased but if you manage to keep this approach of being kind and respectful and patient don't complain don't nag don't react inshallah they will change yes if you see that there is a systematic plan to damage you then you'd adopt another policy but most of people especially the family they ha don't have such thing 24 to enjoy the good and prohibit the bad as much as it becomes applicable to you as much as you have power and time and energy with of course consideration of all the rules that we have and also know that the real Amr al-Ma'roof wa Nahyan al-Munkar is through your own example your own example should teach them to do the good and avoid the bad but of course sometimes you have to talk sometimes you have to take measures but not compromising about your own example to motivate other to do good things to encourage other to do good things to have concern for others a servant of Allah a wayfarer is very kind very caring person if you only think about yourself even if you only think about your spirituality it's not going to work you have to be concerned about other people too you have to see how you can help other people with their spirituality I don't know with their studies with family effort what etc this is very important therefore he says Qam khari mudan. So you should have the pain when people are in pain and also try to bring others also to this beautiful path ba khod dar suluk sharik sakhtan you don't need to tell people that you are you know working on this spirituality you are on for example you have a special routines you have a special for example I don't know practices so you don't need to tell it this to everyone maybe you say this only to your teacher or you know, some select people but you try to engage others you try to help others if there is something useful you try to share with them if you don't have 
power to push gently others into this path those who are not on the path to push them into this path if you don't have power and you are worried that even you yourself may lose the orientation then you change the policy into a policy of mudara wa taqiyya means you try to be considerate with them but don't show that you are in this path you're on this journey and don't make feel them you know also worried because if they know someone on a spiritual path they get worried sometimes so so you you deal with them you socialize with them make them feel happy and comfortable as much as possible uh, without losing your own track without losing your own focus You know this uh, path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, something very delicate and it's really an art we have to master this art it's not something you can do it you know in bulk there are lots of details lots of delicate issues how to deal with this person with that person you know nicely at the same time have your own focus your own you know commitment etc if we were going to just isolate ourselves and live in separation from people or just live with people who are a spiritual uh, in a community or a monastery then it was easier but we need to live with people we need to be inside the community inside the family and observe everyone everyone's rights make as much as possible people you know feel comfortable people feel respected people feel someone is caring for them but then do also your own work and this is giving you great energy great light you are not losing you are it's not you know obst is a kind of obstacle it's actually a kind of exercise i can look at problems that i am dealing with as obstacles so you know i have to spend time on my child i don't know my husband my wife my in-law etc I look at them as obstacles and say you know they are stopping me I can look at these as exercises that are part of my journey these exercises make me stronger for each of them I get some credit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is actually a great part of my journey my journey is not just between me and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala great part of my journey is how i remain mindful of allah and reflect the light of allah in dealing with these issues sometimes i am in good condition sometimes i am in difficult condition it's all part of the journey Twenty-five to do your uh, time management, to have a plan for your time, not let your time be wasted, and for every time during the day and during the week, you should have some plan. Especially, he says. for every time during the day and night you should have word a pattern of zikr a pattern of you know invocations so that your time is not wasted so if you don't have something uh, a specific you do your 
word even if you can do it when you are doing something specific for example you have to study you have to work you have to cook you have to wash you have to drive you have to take your children to school or bring them back you have to do certain things if you have free time you have word if also you are doing something and you can combine it with some word on the way or waiting or doing something do some zikr then he says these are the things that we have received from our imams السلام, they used to observe these things practice these things and also instructed others to do these things then there are some techniques some exercises that you find in some a spiritual literature a spiritual you know instructions that are not rooted in tradition and sunnah of ahlul bayt alayhim assalam for example he says chelle dashtan to seclude yourself isolate for 40 days and do nothing except you know your spiritual things like about that the tafakkur etc he says we don't have such a thing as a spiritual instruction yes we have this beautiful hadith man akhla sallallahu arba'ina sabahan whoever purifies it doesn't say purifies what purifies action purifies you know, salad, ibadah, etc. It says, man akhla sallallahu, whoever purifies for Allah, which means perhaps purifies everything, purifies himself or herself for Allah for 40 days, jarat or zaharat yanabi ul hikmah min qalbi ala lisan. Fountains of wisdom, springs of wisdom will flow from his heart to his tongue. He says, maybe. This is what has inspired some people to instruct Chelle Neshini. Chelle in, in, in a Farsi means 40. Neshini means sitting, means to have a special amal for 40 days in a kind of uh, totally spiritual, not being engaged in worldly affairs as much as possible. He says, we don't have such a thing. Of course, he says, we have this hadith, and he says, maybe some mashayikh, some sheikh, some masters, maybe they found these are good things for a spirituality, and they advised people to do this, you know in our Islamic spirituality even among our Shia scholars we have uh, some lots of similarities lots of similarities but there are some differences also their method their focus for example the school of Akhun Mullah Hussein Ghuliya Hamidani and then Ayatollah Qadi Tabatabai and then Allama Tabatabai for example focuses very much on Muraqaba. Some ulama are different. Mullah Muhsin Faith has this idea that uh, we should do things as much as possible uh, in line with what Ahlul Bayt were doing 
and t you know teaching others to do and not to adopt practices which might be good but they are not directly received from Ahlul Bayt some ulama he say when something is compatible with the teachings of Ahlul Bayt السلام, and it has been tried and it's useful we can adopt it there is no problem like children Nishini many of our ulama do this children Nishini in any case his idea is that maybe some mashayikh have advised this because it helps because you know when you have this children Nishini the good thing is that you gain some um, energy you make some habit and then when you come to ordinary life you can keep it but if at the same time that you have ordinary life and ordinary tasks you want to develop a habit might be difficult another thing that he mentions is Tarke heivani karta. Some spiritual people say, as much as pos possible, we should not eat, for example, meat. Even some people say we should not have as much as possible, uh, you know, marital relation. To gain more spirituality he says for example maybe for advising not to eat meat they are relying on hadith that says you know reduce consumption of meat for example there is hadith that don't make your uh, stomach graveyard of animals certainly to eat too much meat is not good for our health and for our spirituality. But he says not to eat meat at all is not good. To reduce, yes. Certainly to do that, certainly to have privacy is very good, but to isolate yourself no. You need to attend Jum'ah and Jama'ah. You need to be in the community with the family. So, his idea is this, that if you do these things that we have said, these 25 things, observe them, inshallah you will reach your destination. Even if you don't have you know, this kind of practices like Chalinashini or, you know, Tarke Heivani Kardan, etc. You don't need to have that kind of ascetic life. Of course, again, I have said uh, there are different attitudes. What is very important is that. Uh, as much as it's a matter of general instructions, something that all our ulama agree on, you do it. If you want to go further into some specific lines, then you need to do it under instruction of a mentor who would monitor your progress and based on your context, your condition, your environment, you know, tells you what to do extra or what not to do. But, for example, these 25 things or, you know, many things like this or muraqaba, these are general things that we can do. And with these things, we can make big progress, great progress, inshallah.
Then he says, one of the things which is very important in wayfaring, in Suluk, is Horriya. Horriya, if you want to translate it literally, means freedom or maybe to be more precise, to be free, to be a free person, to be a free person. Because if I just say freedom, it may be understood more in an external way. But this is including inner freedom as well. Means to be free from what he calls شوائب طبیعت و وساوس عادت و نوامیس عامه He explains this and inshallah in the next session we can expand but just to prepare our minds for this discussion a wayfarer who wants to move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be tied up with different ropes to dunya or to the current position that he is in. You need to be free to go, to move. Tabi'a is a big way of being attached and being tied up and being, you know, unable to move. Shahawat, Ghazab, Hubbul Jah, Hubbul Dunya, Hubbul Mal. These are thick ropes that can be fastened around us by ourselves and then we are not able to move. And then there are adat, habits, etc. So we need to free ourselves. You know, if, if you have very fast car, but this car is fastened with, you know, uh, metal ropes. You cannot move, even if you accelerate, it cannot move. So we need to see what is uh, stopping us to move, what is making us uh, stuck and free ourselves. This is what, inshallah, we discuss, bi'iznillah, in the next session. الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى السلام عليكم عليكم السلام ورحمة الله I have two two questions. Um, the first one is related to the first point that you mentioned, uh, point number twenty, and husnul run. Yes. Uh, that how you know we shouldn't have, uh, well, we should have husnul run and not have sual run, except obviously you know in certain circumstances you need to make sure that you know you're kind of careful, um, etc. So my my first question is, I mean. It's easy to say have husnuban, and it also might be easy to, you know, to not show that you have suwanban, right? But internally, if now for whatever reason, whether you are internally discriminating or, you know, for whatever reason, you might have some prejudice, mm. you know, inside inside you that you might pass judgment and not have a good view about an individual. So, you know, the external part is one thing that you don't do anything about it, but internally, how can you, how can you change that, um, you know, from, from inside? 
that's uh, the first question I have. And the second question is about uh, a point on tawakkul that you mentioned. <clears throat> I think it's two, one or two points after that. Um, you know, how how do we assess the level of tawakkul that we have? And uh, again, here, uh, you know, it kind of is an instruction, have tawakkul on Allah. But again, it's, it's very easy to say that. But it's not something that you just, you know, turn a button on yourself, okay, have tawakkul. You know, internally, again, how can you, you know, we can't force ourselves to, to have tawakkul, right? We can force to follow fiqh, but not to have tawakkul. So how do we assess where we are with tawakkul and, you know, practically, how can we increase and improve that level? Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. York. Having host not than about people to great degree depends on our own nature in the sense that people of purity and taqwa normally think about other people that they are the same unless it's proved otherwise. People who are not pure also they think other people are like themselves unless proved otherwise. So somehow automatically you project yourself outside and look at people from that perspective. So a person who is very honest, very kind, it's very difficult for him to think in a bad way about other people. You know, they say, uh, they told one of ulama that uh, last night before Fajr, a thief, you know, attacked Madrasa and stole something. And he said, when did then he do his Salatul Layl? If before Fajr he did theft, so when did he do his Salatul Layl? So maybe it's an exaggeration, but it's very nice. So this alim cannot think someone in that blessed time to do something other than salatul layl. Why? Because he himself is that much, you know, committed to that. So if I cannot hurt people, I cannot think people are hurting me. Okay? It's very difficult for me. So this is one way, I'm not saying it's 100% uh, always the case, but this is really affecting. Another thing is that at least every time that something negative comes to your mind about other people, try not to act upon it and try to find lots of other options, lots of other possibilities. So if tens of times, if for years, you always try not to go just by by one interpretation, you train your mind to always think in a much more diverse way about what people do and say. Especially if you take into account that when you talk to people, you see they have some explanation. With experience, you can train yourself. You know, many, many times I have seen that, for example, when in a meeting, you know, something is discussed, then we say, let's ask the person himself to defend himself. He has something that would change our uh, judgment. Either totally is different, or at least it's not that bad that was thought. This is why we should not, first of all, talk in absence of people. Even in our mind, we should not judge about them in their absence. And secondly, listen to them, talk to them. Uh, So, it's not something that can be uh, fixed soon. Yes, what we can fix soon is not to do anything out of suspicion, not to say, not to do anything. But even in your heart, not to have bad opinion needs 
training and unfortunately also some people because of their job sometimes uh, deal with bad people this is also affecting them so for example uh, you know if you are a um, police man or woman yeah and most of your work is with uh, when there is a problem with criminals or you know people who have fight etc if this is your job it's very difficult to remain with clear mind or if you know someone is you know working for you know secret services uh, you know gradually they may think everyone is a spy everyone may be you know uh, even unconsciously they may become like or people who watch too much you know movies which are about you know for example you know uh, secret services etc or criminals uh, so some jobs and some uh, kind of uh, even entertainments can uh, damage our natural and you know our fetri attitude and we may think all people are like this so you have to be very careful if you have a specific jobs that you deal with criminal or for example imagine if you are a judge or you work in the judiciary system okay what type of people you see every day every day you see people who have problems either they are robbers or they are robbed either they are attacking others or they are attacked if you have this job this is very difficult when you go on the street forget all that and look at creation of Allah you know with beautiful you know eyes and beautiful ways uh, so it needs lots of practice lots of training lots of dictating to ourselves that you know my experiences are very limited there are billions of people I have met few people who were troublemakers for example why I should think in a negative way about people Thank May Allah bless you. And if there is time for the, on the second point as well, if there is time. So, Ali, what was the second? The second one was about tawakkul. Uh -huh. uh, how to understand we are really mutawakkil? Very good question. I can say different things, but maybe I say one thing that uh, one of the things that you know is in hadith that a real sign of tawakkul is that to be more uh, certain and to trust more what Allah has than what you have so I have for example money or I have a friend who can help me and I have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which one gives my heart more sukoon, more tranquility having this money having this friend who knows things and can help me or having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which one gives me more tranquility more sukoon, more you know a calmness if thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comforting me then I have tawakkul but if I am worried unless I have someone to help me or I have something in my pocket then means I don't have tawakkul so I don't say we should not have money, we should not have friends, we should not have means. I say which one gives you more hope? Which one makes you feel more powerful? Having Allah on your side or people and means on your side?
thank you very much. Nick. May God bless you. Um, so I'm not seeing any other hands up on the chat. Uh, there is one question that's come through. Uh, this is from Sister Insha. She goes, Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. How do we deal with our environment and immediate family if most of their time is not of interest to us or often not very beneficial conversations are taking place? You know, maybe they are wasting their time, maybe, I don't know, maybe they have good reasons, but certainly you are not wasting your time if you are uh, spending time with them. You know, there are two things. Your child maybe is wasting time, for example, sometime with a game, I don't know. But you as a mother, as a father, know that you have to spend time and play with them. This is not a waste of time. Or maybe even an adult is doing something not very nice or not very, you know, meaningful, not very serious. Instead of uh, studying something useful, you know, they do things which are... But you feel as a servant of Allah, you need to uh, spend time with them. They need you. And with being with them, you can, inshallah, in the long term, have good impact on them. For you, this is not a waste of... This is ibadah. This is jihad. The only concern is not to do it too much so that you also yourself become like them because if you are not careful and you get too much uh, into what they do then uh, you may also lose your track because many people are on the spiritual path for some time and then they go back to the ordinary life they become like others this is the concern otherwise if you know what you are doing and you have control over your uh, decisions that is ibadah that is great uh, spend time with them and inshallah you would see they also little by little change but even if they don't change as a father as a mother as a sister as a brother spend time with people for the sake of allah not all the time, but good time, and inshallah you would see that they change and also it's good for your spirit because you do it for the sake of Allah. And this is something that is not also making you feel you are you know, a great person because you have done so much of this about that, etc. You know, uh, for example, if instead of spending time, you know, we do some about that, maybe sometime we develop ujb, self admiration, but. These things, no, we actually feel very bad about ourselves. But this feeling bad about ourselves can be actually a good thing. Remain in control of your general thing, your track, and then no problem, spend some time with them. If you see that... Uh, no, you are becoming one of them. And there is a worry that you lose the, everything, then reduce it. Yeah. Thank you, Sheikh. Very nice answer. Many thank yous are coming through on the chat as well. May Allah bless all of you, inshallah. I think if you have time, we can finish off the dua. Sure. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اقض حوائجنا اللهم اغننا من الفقر اللهم ادع عنا الدين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين التماس دعاء بليس خدا حافظ جزاكم الله خير يلا بليس